society deems ABDL as not normal behavior. So today, let's talk about what is considered normal in society and change normal and not normal to maybe understanding and acceptance. Sometimes life can be tough. I recently came across a thought provoking post that delved into the mindset behind age regression. It provided a fascinating glimpse into reasons why individuals seek solace in this unique community. At its core, age regression offers a sanctuary where people can temporarily retreat from the stresses of life and find comfort in a simpler and more carefree state of mind. Many individuals who engage in age regression do so to allow themselves a much-needed respite from the demands and responsibilities of adulthood. In this community, they can shed the weight of their daily burdens and embrace a child like innocent. Age regression provides a safe space where they can let go of the pressures of societal expectations and simply be taken care of. There are various reasons why people might turn to age regression as a coping mechanism. Some individuals experience trauma or neglect in their childhood and find that age regression allows them to revisit and heal those wounds in a controlled and supportive environment. Others may simply find comfort in the nostalgia and sense of safety associated with childhood. I wanted to talk to you guys today about some fun things you can do in Little Space. So this is for your age play or your age regression. Either way, if you're an age regressor or an age player, you can do any of these things. I like to do these things when I regress because it helps me get into my regressed headspace and it's stuff that I really love and really enjoy. So I have a list of like six or so things for you that you can do when regressing or in little space or whatever if you age play age regress whichever so it'll be fun and let's start my first suggestion of things you can do which you probably already know is to color coloring is super fun and you can let your inner artist shine coloring will help you focus on one thing at a time and when you're done it'll feel like you actually accomplished something so you will have accomplished the goal of coloring the picture when you're finished the second thing you could do is craft you could bead bracelets you could paint or one of my favorites you can make slime there's so much stuff you can do and so much stuff you can make and it's fairly easy depending on what you decide to do like you can do crafts with pipe cleaners and you can do crafts with toilet paper or paper towel rolls plus it's a productive thing and again you will have accomplished a goal by the time you're done with your project age regression could take many forms and each individual's experience is unique some people may choose to dress up in children's clothing, engage in activities such as coloring or playing with toys, or adopt a childlike vocabulary and mannerisms. Others may simply find comfort in regressing mentally, allowing their thoughts and feelings to return to a younger state. It is important to note that age regression is not a form of mental illness. It is a coping mechanism that can be beneficial for individuals who find it therapeutic. However, it is important to engage in age regression responsibly and with the support of a trusted friend, family member, or professional. When it's time for our adult responsibilities, we put away our ABDL side and deal with adult responsibilities. When adulting is done, we bring out the childish things or the ABDL side again. We know we are adults. That is why it starts with A for adult. Humanizing the ABDL community. That's what we're, we're after. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you respect me. Just remember, I am a human being before anything. To foster understanding, it is crucial to humanize those within the ABDL community as well as those in a community that you're not part of. We are just like everybody else. We have feelings. I say, if you prick us, do we not bleed? I don't know. That just sounds like something fun to say. Yes. Some of us have thicker skin than some of those within the ABDL community, as well as those on the outside looking in on the ABDL community. The age regression community provides a supportive and understanding environment where individuals can explore their inner child without judgment. Through shared experiences and mutual respect, members of this community create a safe space where they can find solace and connection. People who are constantly in a state of power have the responsibility of many people, such as supervisors, executives, CEOs, and managers. 
and they often experience a unique set of challenges and pressures. They are expected to make decisions that can have a significant impact on others, and they are often held accountable for the outcomes of those decisions. This can lead to a sense of isolation and loneliness, as they may feel they cannot confide in others about the challenges they face. Additionally, the cause of pressure to perform can lead to burnout and stress. Age regression, the act of mentally and emotionally reverting to a younger age, can be a complex and deeply personal experience. For some individuals, it could be a form of escapism, a way to cope with stress or trauma, or a means to self-discovery. While there is no right or wrong reason to engage in age regression, there is a spectrum of opinions with the community regarding whether or not it should be embraced or resisted. I, I can share a little bit of my journey. Um, so for the longest time, I was trying to get there by um, creating this idea in my head that maybe this is who you are and this is what makes you happy but it's so unorthodox and so there was always this back and forth struggle of like why aren't you a manly man why aren't you like shooting guns and going out there and working on your truck or you know uh as my uncle would always say you know uh i mean i was i was very very good at this part of it but you know the i, I feel like he was encouraging the opposite of and forgive my foul language, but keeping your dick in your pants, you know, <laughs> it's a terrible analogy, but, um, I, I got to the point to where I realized that I was hurting myself more trying to fulfill like this image of like this macho guy. And, and it got to a point to where I, I realized that, you know, I'm not your typical everyday man's man and that's okay. Age regression for men seems to be formed from a sense of not wanting to be an alpha male and wanting to let go. Toxic masculinity, a damaging social construct, often dictates that men should suppress their emotions and strive for unwavering strength and dominance. This restrictive mindset not only stifles personal growth, but also creates a hostile and emotionally suppressive environment for men and those around them. In contrast, embracing childlike qualities offers a liberating alternative to toxic masculinity. Children are naturally curious, expressive, and open to a wide range of emotion. They laugh, cry, and experience anger without the fear of judgment. By reclaiming these childlike qualities, men can break free from the shackles of toxic masculinity and embrace a more fulfilling and emotionally healthy life. I grew up in a very religious household where you were expected to fulfill this this cookie cutter stereotypical role of being X guy, you know, like I mentioned my uncle earlier, you know, he, he would push these ideals on me and so would my dad. And, and that would hurt me because like, I feel like I wasn't living up to those things by being me. And then I realized I don't have to be those things, you know, I can be myself. And so once I finally uh, stopped believing in what they were saying and, and believed in my truth, if you will, then I was able to, to, get past that hurt and no longer be hurt and begin uh -huh. healing myself with uh -huh. being myself. Individuals who have been raised in a religious household often internalize the values and beliefs of their moral codes in their faith, which can become deeply ingrained in their psyche. As a result, they may feel compelled to conform to these expectations, even if they no longer fully resonate with them. This can create a sense of inauthenticity as they may feel the need to suppress their true feelings and desires in order to maintain a facade of piety. The conflict between one's authentic self and the expectations of the religious upbringing can lead to feelings of guilt, shame, and self-doubt. Individuals may find themselves torn between their desire to be their true selves and their fear of disappointing or alienating those around them. This inner turmoil can take a toll on their mental health and emotional being, leading to anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem. Furthermore, the social and cultural norms associated with religious households can be restrictive and judgmental, making it difficult for individuals to express themselves freely. They may feel pressured to adhere to certain behavioral and lifestyle norms, which can stifle their creativity and individuality. This can lead to a lack of personal growth and a sense of stagnation. However, despite the challenges, many individuals who grow up in a religious household eventually find ways to navigate the tension between their authentic selves and their religious upbringing. Some may choose to gradually distance themselves from their faith, while others may find ways to reconcile their personal beliefs with their religious values. This process of self-discovery and integration can be challenging but it can ultimately lead to a greater sense of self-acceptance and personal fulfillment. It is important for individuals who have grown up in a religious household to remember that they are not alone in their struggles. There are many others who have experienced similar challenges and have found ways to navigate them. 
With time, self-compassion, and support, it is possible to break free from the constraints of one's upbringing and embrace one's true identity. What's our, what's our next product? Ah, okay. The always discreet pant. <laughs> pant. I liked these so much that I wore the whole packet and I didn't keep the packet and I didn't keep one separate so that I could show you what it looks like. But I'll put up a picture here and I'll just tell you a little bit about them. They are between sizes 91 to 137 centimeters. So they fit a pretty broad size range. The price was I got them for $12 for a pack of eight. I think they may have been on sale. So what do they look like? So they're all white and there's some purple lace and like florally patterns around the waist. There's three different patterns. They're all cloth back. First impressions of them were they're scented. So it's kind of like a, a sweet kind of powdery scent, like a perfume. They were really soft, the material, like a lot softer than the Confidere and they were a wider cut. And they held like a surprising amount from memory. Um, I would pee in them like at least two times before I needed to get up and change. The fit. I thought it was quite good. They felt snug in the right places. I never really got the feeling that I was going to shift in my pull up would stay in the position and then I'd move and then the pee would just go everywhere. Never really had that worry when I was wearing the always pants. They felt really nice on as well. They were really, really soft. And I think the scent helped give me a good first impression of the nappy because um, I'm a very scent driven person as many of you I'm sure are and I like the way they look because they're white they've got little light purpley bits on them I love lavender in terms of capacity quite good like I said I managed to pee twice before I needed to change and I thought mm, that's pretty that's pretty nifty and the cost the cost $12 for eight pull-ups yeah that, that's pretty fair so the pros the pros are they are pretty discreet even though they're, they're a bit thicker, they're a bit puffier than the last one that we tried. They weren't too crinkly um, and they had a really wide size range. I found them pretty comfortable. I'm used to the feeling of like a big bulky nappy, um, but I didn't mind these pull-ups at all. I felt like I had a little bit of protection. When I was wearing the Confidere, it just sort of felt like I was wearing underpants. I kind of forgot that they were absorbent most of the time. And I didn't even attempt to pee in them because they were too thin. When it comes to diapers, there are diverse perspectives and experiences. Some individuals derive comfort and enjoyment from wearing diapers, finding them to be a source of pleasure and relaxation. For these individuals, diapers can provide a sense of security, softness, and containment, offering a unique and pleasurable sensation. They may enjoy the observant and protective qualities of diapers, the feeling of being wrapped and cared for, and the freedom from concerns about leaks or accidents. Diapers can become part of personal exploration, self-care, and relaxation for those who find them enjoyable. In the ABDL community, there is a spectrum of preferences and practices. Some individuals may wear diapers discreetly under their clothing, while others choose to incorporate them to their daily wardrobe or engage in role-playing scenarios that involve wearing diapers. It is important to note that adult diapering is a personal choice that should not be stigmatized or judged. I've intentionally stayed away from the spicier side of the ABDL life because age play and intimacy involve profound nuances that I'm not equipped to handle. However, I'll let y'all watch this clip to see how somebody else might feel about it. Who is in the community, that is. <laughs> Harsh and really awful, but, um, and I'm not passing judgment on anybody who likes to be sexual when they're little, but the way I feel is when I'm little, I'm mentally three to five years old. And if you do anything sexual with an, with, ah, uh, hold on. I'm mentally three to five years old, uh, which is pretty much the same thing as being physically three to five years old and if you do something sexual to a three to five year old <laughs> you're a pedophile and I don't like the idea of being with somebody who finds me wearing or acting like a baby sexually attractive no. No, I'm a really big so if Baba hasn't said already, she is feeling quite poorly. Yeah. She's got she's got the COVID. The, the COVID. I mm. think I've got Omicron. Yeah. Which is like the new. Because you don't have the loss of taste or smell. 
And you don't have like any of the other symptoms of the other ones. No, it's just. You've got the new symptoms with like the runny nose and the. Yeah, I have like cold symptoms and then. I have really big ulcers in my mouth that are like stopping me from eating and then mm -hmm. I have body aches, night sweats, and ear infection for definite. Yeah, um, and I got a new frog and um, her name's Froggy mm -hmm. and she's not mine. No. She is. She is but not. She's, she is but she's not. But I love her a lot and I'm really cold daddy. You know what we're doing? Bacon a cake. Bacon a cake. And then Daddy's gonna help, help me do some learning. Yeah. Wait. Daddy joggers. Daddy joggers. Daddy wants me to put his joggers on. Yeah. You haven't worn these yet, have you? Not those ones. I've worn your black ones that you got me. Yeah. Whoa. Look at <laughs> balance. Let's go. You gotta tie him up. <laughs> Certain individuals participate in the ABDL lifestyle with a partner. In this video, we will see a DDLG, which means daddy, dom, and little girl, which is another subset of the ABDL life. This video demonstrates that individuals engaged in the ABDL lifestyle do not spend their entire lives confined to a crib and solely consuming milk. In fact, it encompasses a multifaceted and diverse lifestyle. Join the lines together. Yeah. There you go. So, do you want to practice your ones? Surprisingly, even activities like doing numbers and other seemingly mundane tasks can be enjoyable. When engaged within this little space, these activities become an integral part of the experience. This video even shows an underlying charm that revolves around the concept of caring for another person particularly those who don't have their own children. Those who advocate for embracing age regression argue that it can be a harmless and even beneficial way to relax, de-stress, and connect with one's inner child. They believe that indulging in childlike activities, such as playing with toys, watching cartoons, or dressing up in a younger clothing can provide a sense of comfort and safety. On the other hand, those who argue against age regression believe that it could be a form of escapism that prevents individuals from facing the challenges of adulthood. They worry it can lead to a lack of motivation, stunted emotional growth, and difficulty in forming and maintaining healthy relationships. Furthermore, they argue it can be a dangerous coping mechanism, as it allows individuals to avoid dealing with their problems in a productive way. Ultimately, the decision of whether or not to engage in age regression is a highly personal one. There is no right or wrong answer, and what works for one individual may not work for another, and that's why it is important for individuals to weigh the potential benefits and risk of age regression before making a decision, and to seek the support of mental health professionals if they have any concerns. So, in the end, for me, I can understand some people who want to live the adult baby life um, because it is, you know, just a way to relieve stress, just like other people do sports or play video games or do cosplay or whatever. I can understand that. The diaper lover part is a lot harder for me to understand, but, you know, that's just not my area to understand. If you have anything you want to add to this, do it in the comment section. Goodbye.